Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. That's the whole lesson is that what you put out will come back yeah. and, and part of the theory in witchcraft is what you put out will come back times three. Yeah. So even if you put out a little bit, thought, mm -hmm. it's going to come slamming back. And that's, I think, how people should um, think about in life. I mean, when you're talking to people and dealing with people every day, who, no matter who it is, put out something positive, you're going to get something positive back. Hi, my wonderful sweet babies. It's Destin Choice. And for today's video, I really had to get on here and speak about why I stopped believing in God and why I think all that shit is just complete nonsense. Now, yeah, I'm going to get right to the point and basically say this. As I fuck up my chicken nuggets, I just really wanted to get on here and say the big reason why I got into spirituality is because I had a lot of questions about religion. And it all started with the way I grew up. For one, I have a lot of evil, nasty, conniving people who just so happen to be related to me. And I would always notice how these motherfuckers would always go in church, getting on their knees, like they're about to suck some dick, like they're going to do something, acting like they're believing in God, that they're praising God and doing this, this that, and the third. And then I kind of put two and two together and realized a lot of these people in church don't like each other. They hate each other. They're all nasty to each other. They're always talking about whose son is better, whose wife is this, who's this, who's that, who's gay, who's that, who's, who's fucking who, who's divorced by who. And I realized, damn, um... Y'all really aren't here because y'all genuinely want to support and believe in what you guys call God. A lot of you motherfuckers are in here because you punk ass bitches are just scared of going to hell. And you weird ass niggas are just scared of burning in hell for all the horrible shit y'all have done. So realistically, I think church is just a cesspool full of nasty individuals who do evil shit. And then the other 10% are people who generally are there for good intentions. And a big reason why I kind of shut away from religion was... I was probably around 12, 13 years old, and I had a lot of questions. I would always ask my mom growing up, so this book that we're obeying, who wrote it? She couldn't even tell me who wrote it, and I bet some of y'all watching this can't even tell me who wrote it either. So that was pretty much my whole ordeal when I was like, okay, I'm done. What really had me fucked up was when I was Googling sins back in 2011 and 12, I was Googling, um, what are a list of sins? I found out pork was one of them. And my first instinct was, oh, bitch, I can't eat ribs and pork rinds. And then I realized a big reason why a lot of people obey these so-called commandments and what you can't do and what you can do is because a lot of people realistically just don't want to go to hell. They want to look good in front of other people. They go to church, wear their best outfit, flaunt. And I remember being a kid and I used to fall asleep in that bitch. There, I said it. When I would be in church, I would be like slumping my damn chair like... Because it would be early as fuck, and I would just be sitting there like, oh my fucking God. Like, okay, when does 10.30 come? We've been in this bitch since 7 a.m. That, that was literally me. And I had so many questions because I would see the way people acted around me, see the way everybody would switch up. And I remember my mom got repent inside of a pool. And I remember telling myself, okay... Since she's getting repent, that means she's going to change her ways and she's not going to sin anymore. She's going to be a new person. She's going to live by God. Two weeks later, here she go, cussing up a damn storm, acting a damn fool, harboring money. She owed mad people fucking money and she's fucking hiding from them. People knock on the door. She acting like she's not home because she owed people money. People pulling up to her and my auntie's house because she owed them money and she not answering the door. Shit like that. And I would think to myself... Bitch, didn't you get repent? But I would, like, keep that to myself. And I would sit up here and just wonder, so what is the point of obeying this book, saying you're going to do good, saying you're going to do right, and then turning the other way and saying, okay, I'm going to do all this fucked up shit behind the scenes and in the clubs, and when I'm with my girls or when I'm with my guys, and I'm going to do evil, nasty shit and evil shit and lie and steal and be a conniving thief, but then I'll still go to church on Sunday because God will still forgive me. And then I started realizing to myself, so what is the point of people being religious if they just want a reward in the end? Because that's what it seemed like to me. A lot of people just want a reward in the end. Like, okay, yeah, so this life won't be for nothing. You know, I, if, I, if I'm good and I'm, and I'm good and I cook for people and I try to be nice to people, even though I'm not nice, I'll still go to heaven and live a beautiful life. Personally, truth be told, I've had my spiritual awakening since 2016. And I think that is kind of what made me realize that I ain't never going back to religion because I saw the way people around me reacted and acted in beautiful, big-ass church hats, nice suits, behind the scenes, after church would be over. I saw how they all acted, and they were fake. 
They were fake. They were evil. They were very bad people. And then the other people were decent human beings. Now, trust me, I get it. That doesn't classify all religious backgrounds. And it doesn't apply to Catholic people as a whole. And it doesn't apply to Christians. I personally like to call them Bible thumpers, personally. Because they're the people who will bring up the Bible, bring up certain verses, and then they'll turn around and do some other shit and you'll be like, wait, isn't that a sin too? Wait, you can't wear that material. You can't wear that animal material. And they're like, oh, well, that's different. You know, we all are told growing up when we're growing up religious that no sin is greater than any other sin and all sin is a sin. But I think to myself, so why do people hold certain sins on a bigger pedestal than the other one? That was all the questions I had. Another concern I had was... I would notice that the very same people who claim to be so religious and so into God were the very same people who were out here ignoring molestation going on in their household. And that is a very cringy thing to bring up, but it's the truth. There's molestation going around all across people's families, all across Hispanic communities and black communities and many communities as a whole. And we sit up here and ignore it. And also, you guys know the reference of the priest always molesting the little boys? Yeah, that's not a reference in movies and TV shows for nothing. That's a very common thing. And same thing goes for that damn money basket they will be, they will be passing out in church. I would sit up here and I would say, um, so we just throwing fives and ones and tens and twenties to like, and it, we're handing the hat back to the priest. What the fuck is he doing with, with, with the money? So you ever notice how you don't ever see a priest driving an ugly car? You don't ever see a priest in an ugly house. They always got nice cribs, nice houses and all that shit. What do they really do? Where do they really get their fucking money from? Realistically. So it would always confuse me how priests would be balling and doing so good. And, I, and, and in my personal opinion, I noticed that the priest would be balling because I see it like this. How do we really know where that money is going? If I give you a donation, is it tax deductible, bitch? Am I going to get a receipt for putting some money in the basket? You know, I really just realized that a lot of people really use religion and Christianity and Catholic religion and many other religions to exploit people and exploit miserable, unhappy, angry, and sad people. So when a, a murderer or a rapist or a vindictive, evil, narcissistic bitch goes to church, they just want to go in there because they think to themselves, okay, this, this soothes my ego, this relaxes my ego. If I, you know, I could still do evil shit behind the scenes and still be a fake ass bitch and still be nasty and malicious and use people... But if I go to church, it's okay because, you know, God will forgive me. So at that point, I'm figuring, like, what is the point of hell then? You know, I personally don't believe hell exists and I don't believe heaven exists. And let me explain why. I believe that hell and heaven is all in our heads. But let me further explain. Heaven is the life you create for yourself. If you're a good individual, you put out positive energy. And positive energy isn't just saying you put out positive energy. Actually practicing what you preach and not trying to expect anything in return, you're living. You're going to be living in heaven. If you give to people, or you give that person your last $2 or the shirt off your back, and you don't want nothing in return but to just help them make them feel good, then you're going to live a very blessed life And because you're not doing it for anything in return. You don't care about no heaven. You're not thinking about God. You're not thinking about this. You're doing the right thing because I believe in the saying, do the right thing even if no one is watching period. But I want to use this as an example. You know how we grew up seeing the evil angel and the good angel on both our shoulders? Yeah, so whenever I see these references, I feel like this is them, aka, you know, spiritual people or the elite is trying to tell us, see, heaven and hell is technically in your head. Because these angels, you can't see them. You're the only one that can hear them and see them. Notice that, right? That's the same thing goes for negative thoughts. You ever notice how sometimes you'll be chilling one day, you'll get negative thoughts? You know how people say, oh, you are not your thoughts? That's a good example. That negative angel, that's what's whispering in your ear. But you're the only one that can hear it. Where did those negative thoughts come from? Why are they out of nowhere coming out of nowhere? Why did all of a sudden you go from being negative and then you go from being positive and then being positive to being negative? See what I mean here? You just got to gravitate towards which angel. So heaven and hell, in my opinion, is in your head. But then there's the people who, of course, for example, the influencers who record themselves doing a good deed, like the Ace family. Here, we're giving you $50. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Let's, 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 bitch, come on. Stand still. Let's get a thumbnail. Come on, come on, come on. Give, give the bitch the $50. Give this bitch. She smells like pee and shit. I'm trying to get out of here. Okay. Got it. Okay. Okay. See, guys? See, Ace family? We're so giving. It's just people like that. It's going to change a lot for him because he, he really needed the money. Oh, my God. And that's the best part about this whole thing. Like, he wasn't even a part of the contest and he won someone who needed the money. I'm so happy he I, won. God works in a serious way. 
God works in mysterious ways. It's people like that that make me really question. So religion basically pretty much teaches a lot of us. If you're good, you'll go to hell. If you're good, you'll go to heaven. If you're bad, you'll go to hell. But if you come to church or you ask for forgiveness and you build a relationship with me, then more than likely you'll still go to heaven because it just doesn't make any sense. It's like a it's like a double edged sword. So what if you do have a relationship with God, but you're still doing shitty things? But then people will say, well, technically those people don't have a real relationship with God because that's not God's way. So at that point, I was just like, okay. I had my spiritual awakening in 2016, and my spiritual awakening consisted of all the horrible things that were going on around America. For example, Trump getting elected. That was a very pivotal thing, and that motherfucker woke me and a lot of people up. And that's when I started to realize that this motherfucker, Obama, wasn't as innocent as we thought we were. Same thing when I heard about Pizzagate, and we found out a lot about... Hillary Clinton's suspicious acts, and many of those things are to be servicing. Then we find out that Trump is out here paying only $700 in taxes, and then Jeffrey Epstein got exposed, and we know about Bill Cosby, and I found out that the media was out here pimping Bill Cosby's victims out and making it seem like they were out here telling the complete truth, when if you really do your research, some of them bitches was lying, which I'm not saying he ain't do nothing, I'm just saying that some of them bitches were lying. Lying. Yes, I, that's a whole other video within itself, but a lot of those women were claiming it was one thing and then they would change their story and say another thing in an interview but that's another video for another day so then i started to realize holy shit everything we've been told is a lie you know the more i started researching and doing my own research that's when i started realizing wow the media and the tv we watch really is televised programming that's what they call it programming because we're mentally being programmed to watch television as kids and we're being taught to absorb the energy through the screen same thing goes for the music videos you listen to. I started realizing how low vibrational music really is. Have you ever noticed how most of the music people listen to in the black community, not even the black community, in the Hispanic community, in the reggaeton community, like all of it is low vibrational, all about sex and putting something in somebody's ass and a lot of it is just homophobic and a lot of it is misogynist. I started realizing how low vibrational it is and that's why we live in a low vibrational society. Then I started... I watched a documentary called What the Health, which a lot of you guys know that's a big reason why I decided to lose a whole bunch of weight. I watched What the Health two years ago, and it changed my fucking life. What the Health basically exposed the meat industry, exposed the fact that when you go on fight cancer websites, it'll tell you that you can eat bacon, but in low doses. But bacon has always been known to be a carcinogen. So what the fuck are these dumbass people talking about? You can eat bacon. What are these people talking about when they say, Oh, it's, it's fine. You can eat high fructose corn syrup, just not too much. When high fructose corn syrup is legitimately a drug that is found in Lay's, it's found in almost all the fruit juices that we drink, Hawaiian Punch, Capri Suns. It's damn near in everything that you could think of that has a lot of sugar in it because it's cheap, it's artificial, and it costs pennies to make compared to getting sugar out of a sugar cane. So a lot of companies and food industries will use that as a way to not use sugar and not pay that much money. Same thing goes for these cooking oils. A lot of these cooking oils, like Crisco and vegetable oil, a lot of that shit is just deodorized gasoline that we put in our bodies and increases inflammation. So that's when I really had my real spiritual awakening, 2016, 2017, up to 2018. But then my spiritual awakening really heightened when all this damn, you know, protest and bullshit was going on and I found out all this shit about, you know, what was really going on in this country, you know, taxes and this and that and what's going on and, you know, how both of them damn parties ain't shit and that there's really no lesser of two evils because both of them are just evil as fuck. You just got to pick your poison. That's when I really started to realize, yeah, um, I'm on this spiritual path of I'm going to do what the fuck I want do the right thing, and I'm going to be on my own wavelength while everybody is brainwashed to the media. So that's where my spiritual awakening comes from. Now, my issue with spirituality is this. Spirituality has pretty much been pimped out for the worse, and that's kind of why I kind of cringe whenever I see spiritual people or people trying to be spiritual, because it's kind of turned into some big-ass market where people exploit naive people who are looking for their purpose. Science your throat chakra is blocked and how to unblock. The throat chakra, or Vishuddha chakra, is located in the center of the neck. A blockage in this chakra can show up as a hard time communicating, difficulty expressing self and holding back, shyness, increased anxiety, and difficulty speaking. Blockages can also appear to be throat, thyroid, mouth, and neck issues, nodules, laryngitis, bronchitis, asthma, calcifications, and neck pain. If you're anxious about speaking, fear ridicule or judgment, 
or have a difficulty expressing your truth, you might have a blockage here. How to unblock? Foods, blueberries, blackberries, herbal teas, honey, elderberry syrup, coconut water. Meditate visualizing the color blue and using the mantra, hum. Okay, at this at this point, she done pulled that shit out of her damn poom poom. Because what the fuck you talking about? Blueberries, blackberries, elderberries, coconut water. Open your fucking mouth. You scared of judgment and ridicule? You scared to be held accountable? You scared of saying this? You scared of facing your demons? Open your fucking mouth and speak because closed mouths don't get fed. I don't understand what the fuck she's talking about when it comes to magical chakras and shit, but that's my opinion. For example, people who go to a crystal shop, and I go to crystal shops every once in a while. And I noticed that every time I go to a crystal shop, people would say things like, oh my God, so what is this crystal for? And the employees would say, manifestation, lucid dreaming, clear, vivid dreams. And I would be like, um, bitch, that crystal and so do 500 others. You know what I mean? So I started noticing that people started using spirituality as a way to monetize naive people who don't want to take accountability for their own actions and face their demons. And then I started getting into crystals probably a year and a half ago because I really like crystals because that shit helps me with my energy. It helps me meditate, helps me focus, helps me stay at ease and relax. And Bible thumpers do not come on here trying to fucking tell me, oh my God, crystals are the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil. Oh my God, the devil. Oh my God, you should only be consulting God. First of all, bitch, don't take this personal, but you're spiritual too. You just only get your spiritual guides and your spiritual vibes from one source, which is what people would call God. It's the same shit. It's just I use stones like Moldavite and shit like that to enhance it. You know what I mean? So when people tell me things like, oh, sp- oh crystals and stuff like that, like that's just that's just pseudoscience and shit like that, bitch. What if I told you about what if I told you that about the Bible? What if I sat up here and told you, oh, the Bible's this and that? You know, you can have your opinion about spirituality because everybody has their own unique journey. Rather, your spiritual journey is finding God or your spiritual journey is realizing the energy that's around us and the fact that we might be living in a simulation and shit like that and manifestation, that's fine. But my issue with this whole new age spirituality, which I don't even know why they call it new age spirituality, because it's not really new age spirituality. Spirituality is just spirituality. We just have people who hijack it and are ignorant as fuck and they use it to make some money. For example, the thing about spirituality is turned into this thing where people just look at it as a way to make some fucking money, which is kind of cringe because people will literally say, I manifest and I spellcast that I'm going to have a bank account that's unlimited and I manifest that I'm going to work hard and I'm going to meet all these celebrities and I'm going to make all this money and I only bring wealth in my household. Now, stuff like that can actually work because you're speaking it into existence. But if you're a lazy, bum, dirty, crusty, fat, saggy, titty, bum-ass dude, crackhead bitch that's not doing nothing with your life and you just do nothing at all, and you just spell cast and just manifest, nothing's going to happen because nothing works unless you do. So that's what my issue with spirituality is, is that people kind of misunderstand it because spirituality is a process. It takes years, sometimes months, and a lot of patience to try to get the the grip of it because we live in a world filled with energy. So I believe in good and I I of course believe in evil, but when it comes down to like the one source God, somebody being in the sky, I think it's complete nonsense. So I guess I would say that I'm just spiritual, whatever you want to call it, agnostic, where I believe there's some type of higher power, but I believe in reality we're all just one grain of rice in the entire universe, and there's probably more species and more specimen out there that are probably way more important to the universe than us. But overall, I believe that, in my personal opinion, that we are all gods. And I know this is going to trigger some of y'all, and I know a lot of people in the comments are dragging me, as some of y'all should, but... I believe that we are all gods because you know the power of manifestation and you know how they say if you change your mind, you can change your outlook on things. For example, if you sit around and say, I'm so ugly, but then you just like wake up one day and say, no, I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. I look gorgeous. And you keep telling yourself you're beautiful. Eventually, you start to believe it. And then when you walk around feeling confident, people start complimenting you on how confident you are and how you look. It's almost like that's kind of what I mean. You could change your mind. You could change how you view the world and how the world perceives you. That's powerful if you ask me. So I use things like crystals to keep me balanced. Because, for example, I suffered from a lot of anxiety. But ever since I started getting into crystals, my anxiety is very minimized. Like I use a crystal called selenite, things like amethyst, rose quartz, things like clear quartz, and all these other crystals. Every time I want new crystals, I just go to a crystal shop. I touch whatever crystal resonates with me. 
And that's pretty much it. And crystals have really helped me with my life and my spiritual journey. I know people are going to say, well, it's pseudoscience and it's just a placebo effect. It really isn't. I've had some very bizarre experiences with crystals where they'll just disappear or I'll accidentally like be trying to th throw out the trash. My crystals will fall out of my hand and then randomly that shit will pop up out of nowhere. Like, for example, once I went to a concert and I literally could not find my Moldavite anywhere. My little Moldavite crystal, very powerful crystal. Not really a crystal, it's more of a meteorite, but it's a very powerful stone, more rare than diamonds. These shits are very hard to find. And basically, I remember where I just couldn't find it. I was literally looking everywhere. And then randomly, as I'm in the crowd at a concert, that shit randomly pops out in my hat, like literally like this. I'm like, what the fuck is that bulge in my damn hat? Literally while I'm in the crowd, I'm doing this, that shit falls right into my damn hand. I'm like, what the fuck? I know damn well I did not put that shit in my fucking hat. That is not even possible. So crystals really do work. But I found a video that'll better explain it. Just wanted to say, if you were thinking about getting Moldavite. Yeah, Moldavite is pretty intense. Here's what it does. Essentially, Moldavite removes obstacles that are between you and the path that you are meant to be on. Any door that has a what if behind it, closed or immediately opened. That situation ship that you're in that you're not sure what you are, bye bye, it's gone. The job that you're thinking about leaving but you can't quite do it, bye bye, you got laid off. That house you were kicking the tires on buying, all of a sudden it drops in price. When these things happen, they feel like major life shifts and they can feel really awful at the time they happen. But a year later, you will be in a much better place. That's the power of Moldavite and if you can't find one right now, it's because you're not ready. Moldavite will find you when it's your time. And now is um, that this whole Moldavite thing is like trending. Like everybody wants to be a part of the Moldavite family. Everybody wants to be, you know, life changing and doing whatever they need to do. I don't know what people are doing, but I think people um, need to know that Moldavite is not no bullshit. I mean, Moldavite is not something you play with and it's not something to just be trending. I mean, um, it's life changing and you know, you need to be serious about when you approach something like that. I mean, um, I can't tell people what to do, but I'm just saying, um, giving some advice. If you're gonna jump out there on Moldavite, do your research, make sure you know what you're getting into, make sure you're mentally stable to handle um, what it's gonna take you through. Um, Moldavite jumps right in there and um, starts dealing with some stuff you know you're gonna start seeing your life change you're gonna start seeing people move away from you you're gonna start seeing everything for what it is of course with any um crystal that you use you know it's about intention but moldavite already knows what to do you know moldavite already knows that you need to have these things out of your life you need to focus more on these things you it will carry you to where you need to be and no, this is not sponsored. I just wanted to put that out there because people always ask me what crystals I recommend and how I got into spirituality a lot deeply. So just putting that out there. And no, again, it's not sponsored. But I can speak for myself and say that it's changed my life. But that's not what this video is about. Overall, if y'all want to buy one, y'all can go to moldavitefamily.com and they have a whole bunch of pieces you can buy from cheap little pieces to bigger pieces. So feel free to check it out if y'all want one. And I believe crystals are alive. I believe everything is energy. The water you drink is energy. The food you eat is energy. All that stuff. For example, you eat a McDonald's chicken nugget and you start getting anxiety. You eat some greasy, oily chicken and you start feeling sluggish and sad and depressed and anxious and negative. Yeah, I believe when you eat chicken, you're absorbing the negative energy of that animal when it was killed. You're absorbing its anxiety and its fear and its anger and its sadness while it was being killed. And that's why you feel sluggish and bad and negative and sad after eating chicken. And that's why people who are usually fat as fuck or are overweight usually have very bad anxiety because they're eating the bullshit that was slaughtered and killed. You see what I mean? So I believe everything moves off energy. I believe that we're just in this big, beautiful world and everything is like a radio frequency. And Oprah talked about it one time, how everything around us is just moving in motion where you can kind of feel the energy if you focus on it. So there's this thing called the third eye that people have been pimping out like crazy. People have been saying, I want to open up my third eye. And people think that the third eye is just like an invisible shit on your damn forehead when that's not even the truth at all. Your third eye is basically your consciousness, like raising your consciousness and being aware of everything around you. So basically, ever since I or many people 
would open their third eye, you're able to more so have heightened intuition, where basically your intuition is so strong to the point where you think to yourself, hmm, can I trust this person? And then you just hear a voice in your head that says no. Or randomly, like, you'll hear something and you'll be like, wait, did I just hear somebody call my name? Like, you'll just have heightened experiences, almost like you're more aware of what's going on around you and you're able to take in the energy. Now, we've all had peculiar peculiar or weird experiences that we can't explain, but the third eye makes you just more aware of it. It's just you raising your consciousness and you letting the energy in and accepting it. That's kind of what the third eye is, just raising your consciousness to the point where you start to see through bullshit. You're able to see people's emotions. You're able to tell when somebody's full of shit. Just like how sometimes when you watch a YouTuber and they're trying to apologize and they're crying, you can just look at them and be like, I don't think this bitch is sorry, lies. You can just see someone's eyes. Like, you could just feel their intention. A lot of people have strong intuition, and a lot of people are aware of the energy around them. And a lot of people are empaths to where when they meet people, they can feel the energy. When they walk into a room, they can feel the energy in the room. That's why most people who have social anxiety are empaths, or most people who are bipolar are empaths. Most people with borderline personality disorder are empaths. Most people with ADHD are empaths. Most people, not all, but many are. But it's just some people have more sensitivity than others. So stuff like that has more of an explanation. Stuff like that makes more sense to me than just some old white man in the sky watching over us saying, who's sending, who's sending? Oh, I got, I, got a, I got a pencil with no eraser on it and I'm writing down everything you do and say. Stuff like that just doesn't make any sense to me. You know, it all sounds like folklore and it all sounds like a way to just fear monger people into just obeying. You know, when you tell somebody... God's watching you. They get all scared, like, oh my God, no, he's going to see this. Bitch, do the right thing even if no one is watching. Because if you're out here being a negative, nasty, evil, dirty, disgusting, crackhead, cat lady, stupid bitch who's out, who's just out here just ruining people, being fake people, manipulating people, being a nasty mass manipulator and just trying to ruin people's lives, bitch, you should, bitch, you're going to hell in a handbasket regardless. You need to go to hell and burn in hell with some gasoline underwear because you ain't shit regardless. And even if there was what people would believe a God, in my personal opinion, I don't think there is, why the fuck would he want to take your ass, your antennas to heaven with him to the other side when you out here doing evil shit, but it's okay because you going to church. You going to church. You getting on your knees like you about to suck God's dick and shit and pretend that you're going to obey him. Because you're going to church. You have a relationship with God. God got your back, but you're still the evil bitch. So people would sometimes tell me when I was younger, when I stopped believing in religion, oh, but then you're going to go to hell, but you're going to go to hell for this and you're going to go to hell for that. And I'd be like, well, I'll cross that bridge when it comes. But at the end of the day, I'm sure whatever comes or whatever happens will happen for a reason. Because at the end of the day, I treat everyone with respect. I hold myself accountable. And I like to face my demons. I don't like running away from my problems anymore. You have to grow out of just running away from your problems. So when people sometimes go to God, they sometimes go to God because they don't want to face their demons all the time. Or sometimes they need help getting through their demons. Or sometimes they need some type of clarification that they can still do evil shit, but they can just run back to God and forgive them. And I personally believe that if there really is a heaven, wouldn't everyone go to heaven? Because think about it. Isn't this person supposed to be all forgiving? What if I said, please forgive me. Let me in the gates of heaven. Why doesn't he let me in? Aren't you all forgiving? I mean, I get that he might say, um, no, bitch. I'm still going to give you what you deserve, but I forgive you. But still, stuff like that, just, just it just doesn't add up. I feel like a lot of it has been whitewashed, westernized. You know, you read the Bible. They describe his hair looking one way. You look at the media. He looks one way. You look at almost every one of our parents' household, and they have a white Jesus in their house, which isn't even fucking like realistic because from what the Bible says, wasn't this dude from like the Middle East and shit? Wasn't civilization started in Africa? It's just, it's just certain things don't add up. And then when you read the Bible, one thing that really cr makes me cringe is the fact that hell isn't really described in the Bible. You know, there's references to something fiery, but it doesn't really depict it as hell. You know what I mean? When I bring up a lot of scripture that has to do with this or that, or you can't eat this, or you can't eat that, or you can't wear that type of material, or you can't wear that animal, you're wearing that animal. Oh wait, your bike is made out of this material, your car is made out of that material, you can't wear it, you can't drive that car. People will say, oh no, that's the old scripture. That's the old, bitch, how many damn scriptures am I not aware of? And then I'll bring up the new scripture and they'll be like, no, 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 you have to read the other updated one. Who the fuck is updating this shit? That's my fucking question. So 
That's why I just stick to my crystals, I meditate, I do the right thing, I relax, I breathe, and I pretty much manifest and speak real shit, and I speak a lot of things into existence. And I noticed that a lot of people have been just pimping out and just abusing spirituality, and that's disgusting and pathetic. I remember I gave this one bitch-ass dude that I knew some sage and some palisanto to burn, because I believe in burning sage and palisanto to cleanse your aura and your energy, because like I said, I believe we all are just energy, and energy is all around us. We just can't see it. Some of us can, some of us can't. So we use our eyes to sometimes fill people's energy. I remember I gave this one bitch-ass dude some fucking sage and some palisanto to burn. His bitch-ass started burning it, he started saying, wealth 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 money wealth spirituality isn't going to work for you unless until you have your spiritual awakening spirituality is not going to connect with you or just be with you until you actually let it in you know that's why people say things like oh well it's evil it's this it's that people like to demonize things like voodoo and say oh voodoo is so evil it's so evil santeria is so evil santeria is just is that bitch voodoo and santeria is just spirituality but it's just executed differently i don't see anyone ever criticizing the fucking egyptians when they do their little pyramids because they built their pyramids a certain way for a reason pyramids and geometric shapes have been known to help people manifest and help people connect with them with their higher selves you know people don't ever talk about that and then the media demonizes the whole third eye thing and they call it the evil eye when it's really not the evil eye that's just some shit they teach us so that we, we don't we aren't aware of our consciousness and the energy that exists around us the energy in plants the energy amongst dogs the energy amongst people a lot of us feel like people's energy when we meet them we just don't realize that we're doing it because it's so normal to us to do it you know what i mean when people say good vibes bad vibes that's energy so in a nutshell i believe in energy and things moving on a frequency so if someone tries to do spirituality for good or evil or this or that it's not really going to work out because everything works on a balance just like how people say god works on a balance and everything has to have order that's how i believe spirituality works and i believe in the rainbow effect i believe in the butterfly effect that things do happen for a reason and i believe that we're all interconnected in some way that's why people say the term small world because we're all connected in some way somehow you know you were meant to see this you were meant to do this you were meant to do that but i don't think there's just some big man in the sky who's monitoring all of us so that's why i stick to my crystals I meditate and I pretty much just have a vision board. I stay true to myself. Anytime I have some issues I got to work on, whether it's my mental, my physical well-being or anything that I have to just work on as an individual, I just work on it. I just work on it and face my demons and I do what needs to be done and I do the right thing even if no one is watching. And you should too. But what if I want to find something? With, what if I want to go through my own journey? And I didn't really grow up with the best example in my household but i definitely will say that they taught me a lot of a lot about people's hypocrisy and how they hide behind religion in order to justify their bad actions you know what i mean people say only god can judge me but bitch you out here sucking the path of his dick and cheating on your husband your kids ain't shit so what the hell do you mean only god can judge me bitch i'm judging you too i'm judging you as well and you're gonna ask for God. You're gonna ask for God for forgiveness. Meanwhile, you're gonna go go around and do the same shit all over again. Get the fuck out of here. So, spirituality. I've been on it for the past few years. I've really been on it since 2020. That's why I lost so much weight, and that's why I've been really more aware of what I eat, the things I touch, and the people I give myself access to. Because some people are just low vibrational. I do, however, believe that heaven and hell. Let me just da dibble and dabble in that a little bit. It also depends on who you interact with, who you speak to, who you connect with. I also believe when you come around low vibrational people, which you know who they are. You know the low vibrational people where every time you talk to them, there's always something negative going on. Like, oh, I'm this, I'm that. Or they say something negative. Or if you're in a positive mood, they try to lower your energy and make you feel bad about yourself because of their own insecurities. Like when you talk to somebody and they say, oh, well, your teeth are this. Oh, well, your nose is this. Or, oh, you're too fat. You're too this. I believe people like that have devils and demons attached to them. That's what I believe. I believe they have devils and demons attached to their head and they have like a, a monster that's trapped and connected with them that makes them say these kind of shit. So realistically, I believe in we should just wait and see because we don't really know what happens when people pass away. No one truly knows. I know people have had their awakenings where they've met, the, met what they would call God or they had their little experiences where they met who they would call god or jehovah or whoever but i believe 
that people should do what makes them feel comfortable. And if being religious, believing in God, believing in the Bible, believing in a book that was written many years ago makes you feel at peace, relaxes you, brings you comfort, and helps you sleep well because it guides you and has gotten you through a lot of shit, then so be it. And if believing in crystals and med- meditation, or you're just someone that's just a plain old atheist and you don't believe in anything until you see proof, that's fine. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. But I believe everything operates on an energy. We're all energetic, powerful, and spiritual beings, and I believe we're all God. And that's why I believe we all have the power to create the shit that we want. So yeah, overall, heaven and hell, in my personal opinion, all that shit is in our heads. You can create your own heaven, and you can create your own hell. And the show American Horror Story created a very good depiction of that as well. If you guys didn't know, there was a, a season in American Horror Story, season three, Coven, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen, where Gabourey Sidibe and a lot of the other girls that were witches they astro projected and they projected into a different dimension that was their own personal hell. So it wasn't the fire pits of hell, it was more so a hell that they just hated and they didn't like. And it was all in their head. You know what I mean? It was all in their subconscious mind because their subconscious mind and what's inside and you yourself know what you're scared of and what you hate more than anything. All of us know the most miserable moment in our lives. There's a saying that goes, you are not your thoughts. So you don't have to let your thoughts become your reality. Those negative thoughts, I believe that there's just some type of spiritual warfare where there's probably some demon like whispering in your ear or some shit trying to tell you, oh, they hate you for real, or they don't like you, or you're too sensitive, or you're not good enough, you're ugly. I I believe that. So anytime you catch yourself feeling negative thoughts, I believe that's just that spiritual warfare trying to get you down. So energy very much exists, and I guess you can just call me agnostic, but... I genuinely believe that we're all gods and we all have powers and we're all magical beings in a sense. Some of us just have more, more of it than others. So that's my outlook on this situation. People should just let me know your thoughts and opinions. Let me know what you guys thought about all this, what I said today in today's discussion. And yeah, overall, email me, message me, DM me, email me, tell me what you guys thought. You guys might agree, might disagree. I don't know. But let me know. That's that. Bye.